Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in YouTube is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This Week in YouTube, episode 18, recorded August 12th, 2013. Get paid more on YouTube. This Week in YouTube is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 1 million high-quality video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code TWIYT8. And by ProXBN. ProXBN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymous and unfiltered. For 20% off your new account, go to ProXBN.com slash twit and use the code TWIYT. Hello and welcome to This Week in YouTube. I'm Chad Johnson. This is the show where we discuss everything YouTube. We get into the news. We get into the videos. We get into the topics and, of course, every week we have Lamar Wilson. How you doing, our host? I'm doing great, Chad. You know, this this voice is really coming along. Yeah, man, you sound so much better than last week. Yeah. I'm, you've yeah. really improved. It's really improved. Yeah. Hold, hold, hold on one second. <clears throat> oh, good, I'm back. Oh, did a yeah. squirrel just fall out of your mouth? That was weird. Yeah, it was It was, It was. was a anyway. turtle. Um, How no, are you it's doing? Still, it's, still, it's still a little scratchy. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell that you're yeah. you are still healing from the VidCon experience. Yeah, and yeah. It, and most, most definitely. And we still, even in this episode, we still have news from VidCon. That was oh, it was. So I, hope, I hope it doesn't get worse because of that. <laughs> it's like, contagious. That's what happens yeah. when we talk. There was about a VidCon virus that went around that. All the kids got hit, and I said, that's what they get for having those naughty par parties. Every time you See? say the mm -hmm. name VidCon, it's like Voldemort. It, it seeps more and more into the system. So yeah, you, uh, we may how it works. Yeah, we may have to cut, cut down a little bit. Um, but this week, we have an amazing guest. Amy is here from uh, Savvy Sexy Social. Uh, you have an awesome blog, SavvySexySocial.com. And, of Thank course, you. the YouTube channel and the Twitter and everything. Um, l let us know if, if people aren't familiar with you, what do you do? L give them a short rundown on some of the stuff you cover. The short rundown is I help brands uh, show off their amazing personality online. I make video talking about social media uh, for marketing and for customer service, in addition to just some best business practices. So it gets really fun. Lots of good info for all size businesses, but definitely geared toward micro and small. Perfect. And of course, if you are a YouTuber, you may not know it, but you kind of are your own business. You are your own brand. Yeah. And so this is awesome to listen to and watch. Um, like I, I was just recently looking at your DSLR tips and it was just like, love it. I just bought a DSLR. Like, teach me. This is great. Isn't that <laughs> awesome? I, I've been avoiding it. And I was like, Austin, tell me what I need to know. And he made this great video with me. And so now I, you know, I got to learn something in that episode and teach other people. And I'm going to watch that video a million times when I buy a camera. So cool. how long have you been um, doing the YouTube thing? Uh, I've been on YouTube for a lot, a long time. Um, I don't know why. I, I just knew early on to upload my videos to YouTube. I just started liking the editing process and filming my friends and stuff. Um, and it just kind of happened that way. It wasn't like a strategy like, oh, this YouTube thing is going to be a thing. So I just uploaded all my videos there probably 2008. And, um, yeah, it's been so fun ever since. I did. I have the Schmatastic channel, which has been around for a long time, and it's been all like personal vlogging. But when I started Savvy Sexy Social and was working for myself in social media marketing, I was like, you know what? I need to bring these two worlds together because that's how I'm going to stand out. Um, there's a lot of people talking about social media marketing. So if I can make killer video and deliver the message that way, then I think I'll do okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, uh, now, how long have you been a uh, a blogger? Because that's that's definitely a different world from YouTube. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was actually a tech teacher. We had a computer in my house for, or, you know, ever since I can remember. Definitely at least uh, 
grade school, middle school, um, whenever GeoCities was a thing. I've been a blogger for a long time. <laughs> adding, those, <laughs> adding those line breaks manually. That's awesome. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I wanted to ask you, what, what is social to you? Because, you know, that's part of your name. That's part of what you, you teach. But how would you define social? I feel like social is... Uh, we all say in the marketing space sort of the fundamental shift of how we communicate. And it's so true, but I think that the most important thing is that people think it's the end all be all in some cases, and that's definitely not true. Mm -hmm. uh, social media can certainly start a conversation. You can join a conversation and continue a conversation, but you have to have real life experiences. Even if that means a Skype conversation like this, social media is not everything, but it's certainly a great place to keep the relationship nurtured depending on who that is, it really doesn't matter. It's a great place for that. Mm. And why, why did you decide to go the, the blog route to, to really kind of wrap all of your content around an extra blog? Did, did you find that help from the very beginning? Yeah, I, I think every blog really needs to be specific about its, its niche. I actually just made a video I'm publishing tomorrow about really choosing your niche. And, and for something to be successful, you really have to niche as much as possible. So the blog was really important because I couldn't have all these different blogs, one of them being personal, one of them being professional and have them mush together. It didn't make any sense because the Schmatastic channel attracts very different viewers than Savvy Sexy Social. So separating them was important. And having a website is so important. Um, you can't just depend on other people's online real estate. Um, and, I, and we're definitely going to get into this today as we talk about YouTube. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it's so important to have your own website. And it's so important to get people to realize that that is where they should really be connecting with you. And that's your home base. Because otherwise, you could lose them at the drop of a social network. Right, right. And do you worry a lot about that, about about um, what happens to the future of whatever platforms we build on? I think I don't worry about it. Right. I think if I was cut off from Twitter, I'd be super duper sad. Um, same with YouTube. If YouTube was gone, I would be pretty freaking sad. Um, but it, it's not something you can really worry about because everybody just kind of moves together um, or they don't move at all. Like we've said, the Facebook and Google Plus, um, everybody thinks they're in competition, but the reality is you use these networks for different reasons. And if all your friends and family are on Facebook, that's why you go there. If you're looking for more um, niche information and tech and meeting new people, then maybe you like Google+. Plus. So I don't really worry about a, a social network coming to its demise. I more just worry about where my audience is going to go and just following suit. Cool. And then yes. go ahead, right. Lamar. Oh, I was going to ask you your question, actually. Oh. Um, so I was, I was, yeah, we were wondering, can, can social be automated? You know, so many, so many of these social media experts, you know, they, they'll, they'll, you know, post one place and it goes everywhere. And it's like, you know, yeah. it, it's that automated world. Is, is that, is that genuine? Is that, do, do people see that that's. There's so much argument in this. Yeah. When you use the word automated, it, you know, it makes everybody say, oh my gosh, well, this isn't even social if you're not even going to be there when you do it. But the reality mm -hmm. is, come on, like this is something that we have to have turned on 24 hours a day and we have to be prepared to respond to at any given moment. Now, maybe that's mm -hmm. not feasible for some businesses and they set hours and that's great, but it's still there and operating. So automating stuff makes sense because if you, uh, even if a social media manager full time, they need to schedule some things to go out because they also need to be tracking keywords and following conversations and seeing if their company's being mentioned so that they can respond to that accordingly. So automation is certainly a thing. Um, I personally prefer Buffer app. It is by far my favorite tool to automate. It works for a lot of different social networks um, and, and I love it. The key though to remember is you can automate, but don't automate to one social network and have it copy everywhere else. If you don't treat each social network like they are different, uh, the people who you are not actually respecting on those other copied social networks are not gonna care what you had to say. Think about it, people write their life story on Facebook if you copy that to Twitter, you didn't get to your point in 140 characters. And not to mention, it's really only 120 before they include a Facebook link and Twitter people are like, a Facebook link? No thanks, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know, you could do the one out of 64 <laughs> tweets, you know, just uh, anyway. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, uh, 
Okay, so I, what I wanted to talk about was Buffer App because that was a great tip. And I just wanted to mention, if you're unfamiliar with Buffer, uh, what you do is you send your tweets to Buffer and then it will buffer them. And so they'll come out at a specific time that most people are actually w using Twitter. So if, you, um, if you're if you in the U.S., you know, 4 p.m. is a really great time uh, to send out your tweets. So if you are a YouTube creator, go ahead and check out Buffer App because I really think that that's a, um, a great suggestion. Uh, fine. Yeah, and it doesn't just, I'm sorry, I was just going to say it doesn't just go out um, when it's ideal, but you can actually set up all the different times. And they even set it now where it's not just default. Uh, you can schedule things out longer term, which is why I was keeping Hootsuite in my back pocket, because I, if you have to schedule something out a larger campaign, um, Buffer App wasn't there for you, but now Buffer App is adjusted to that. So definitely a great tool. Sorry to interrupt you. Thank you. Cool, cool. Um, no, 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 I, that's, I wanted, to, wanted to know that. Um, do you is do you see stuff that YouTubers are doing wrong in social very often? Um, I wouldn't say, honestly. YouTubers are the best case scenario. They uh, completely understand how important their audience is to what they're doing, and so they are very much engaged in that conversation. I will say that there are definitely YouTubers where they get to a point where they feel really overwhelmed because they went viral or whatever happens. They get to a certain size audience, and they're like, "I just can't handle it anymore." These people yeah. are tweeting me. I might read a couple things, uh, but they lose sight of how important it is to continue to to talk to these people. And um, it, you can't talk to everyone, and that's certainly not expected of you. But to really set that as a priority is very important because the fact of the matter is the amount of time that you spend creating content, and a lot of people would argue with me about this, the amount of time you spend creating content is probably a third of the amount of time that you're supposed to be spent marketing it. So if you're not responding to your audience at the very least, you're not doing anything to promote your content. So that is not, a, I don't think, a huge percentage of YouTube. The other side of that is the comment section. That's at well, very actually, least you know, for a social I network wanna, you should be. I want to interrupt. This might be a great tip for later on in the show. Okay. So okay. let, let's just pack it up, package let's it up. Build up. The yeah, that is a that is what we call a teaser and a cliffhanger, folks. Ooh. Yeah. So while, while we pay some bills. Right. Absolutely. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> this episode of this week in YouTube is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. Shutterstock.com is a is, it was the place that you will find your next perfect image or piece of video to add to your creative project. Uh, this is the perfect sponsor for this week in YouTube. You can choose from over 1 million high quality stock video clips in 2D, 3D, animated or motion graphics. Shutterstock uh, sources these video clips from around the world and puts them at your fingertips. And they have great sophisticated search tools so you can search, drill down by category, resolution, contributor and more. You can try Shutterstock today by signing up for a free account, no credit card needed. Just uh, start an account, begin using Shutterstock to help you imagine what your next project could be like, and uh, save your videos to uh, video selections uh, you find to your clip box. Once you decide to purchase, you can use the offer code TWIYT8 uh, for a new account and receive 30% off any package. That's Shutterstock.com. For 30% off new accounts, use TWIYT8. And we thank Shutterstock for their support of This Week in YouTube. Thank you guys for helping us out. Very much. I want a free account. <laughs> uh, you use, I mean, Shutterstock is seriously the the, the no, best sponsor I for, I for this. I love, I love that site. I love that site. So... so I, I, I teased it earlier in the show. I keep interrupting everyone on this show. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I teased it earlier. There's a little bit more news that has come out at VidCon. Jason Calacanis did a business panel at VidCon, and he had some really interesting things to say. Mm -hmm. uh, let me Tell me about it, Lamar. Yeah, so, and, and here's the thing. I, at first, when I heard about Jason Calacanis getting into this YouTube thing, I was like, oh, here's just another big wig in investor who doesn't know the space, but actually he ran about 10 Google funded uh, channels that, you know, a few of them did quite well for the first year. And uh, I guess he made news because he chose to not take Google's funding and that raised some eyebrows. Like, why wouldn't you take this free money? And his main concern is that uh, YouTube split is unfair. Currently the creator uh, averages, this is, this is, I mean, it's a fact, but he has to say 
average. Uh, YouTube takes 45% and a creator takes 55, which in his eyes seems very unfair. It's like, you know, if you had a big you know, production cost and you had a sales manager and, and, and all these other factors that you would always be in a red when you're trying to do a, a production. So, you know, while he was talking, I found his, his talk very fascinating. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, like, like, like he actually understands the business side of YouTube. I would have to agree. So for those who don't, Jason Calacanis has been in the the business of, of making videos on the internet for quite some time. And he did, just as Lamar said, break down, if you are going to have this type of production, which is, which is moderate, um, and you're going to be using, you know, this amount for, for such and such and this amount for such and such, uh, you know, here's how it really breaks down. Um, and, and there's a few slides where he's just like, you're, you're underwater. You're, if, if you're trying to do a normal, uh, creation, uh, production like this, you know, with such and such amount per hour and, and hiring these amount of people that it doesn't work out this exact slide, you can see, uh, that YouTube, you know, is, is taking a huge portion of a creator, of, of a business creator's um, expenses because mm -hmm. of how that 45-55 split happens. Uh, basically, what his argument was is that perhaps YouTube should think about a different split it being at 30% to 60%, a lot uh, similar to an App Store model, or right. even as low as 10% to 90% if the creator sells the ad themselves. Um, and, and he did this kind of like ninja, like mind ninja move on the audience where he's like, raise your hand if you have a problem with this. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. no one is going to no raise. No one's going to say yeah, that. Yeah. There's a room full of content creators that are going to be like, yeah. I don't know. I, I think you should get more money. I thought what was interesting too, and uh, and Amy, definitely get your, your take. Uh, but I, I thought it was interesting that he, he mentioned something that amounts to merit pay. And I remember being a, when I was a teacher, that was a very controversial subject that some teachers should be, you know, uh, 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 a you know, have incentives, or if they get better test scores, they should get paid more because they did more work with their their students. That's very controversial in education. But on YouTube, I think if someone is investing a, a lot of money and time and energy, that they should have some kind of incentive because they're bringing in this traffic to this one place called YouTube that is making. Of uh, the bulk of the money anyway, and and so I agree with that. I don't know if anybody else felt like you know merit pay is is a good or bad idea. Yeah, I mean, I guess the question would be how how do you feel about specific YouTubers being brought above the tide of other YouTubers mm -hmm. as, as true favoritism that YouTube decides, you know, you're really good. We're gonna rise you above the rest. We're gonna give you better rates. We're gonna promote your videos. How do you feel about that, Amy? I mean, I don't see how it hasn't happened. Uh, honestly, like I feel exactly. like uh, YouTube has definitely had a history of favoritism. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I think that the people that are putting excellent content on YouTube certainly deserve to be rewarded for that. This is a business plan for a lot of people. Um, but the thing is, we're also at the mercy of this platform. So they get to decide that they're just gonna make the money and have a few employees and hope all goes well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 then one, one thing Jason wasn't mentioning purposely uh, was the MCNs, which you know the the multi-channel networks. Uh, and you know if you think about it, if YouTube is taking forty-five percent, and you sign with a network yeah. where a lot of these deals are thirty percent, you know do the math about how much you're really getting right. getting, getting, getting taken for. Uh, and so not even factoring that in, it was like really scary to, to realize how much of your money yeah. could be gone. I do I do like the networks when they do their job. It's, it is great to have a, a an agent, a manager, or someone who can do something that YouTube can't do for you. They can sell ads directly to your channel. They can get you brand deals. And I, I couldn't reach Pepsi on my own, but maybe they can. And and so there's definitely a benefit uh, to the networks, but I understand why he didn't he didn't bring that up. Uh, I, I, I wanted to ask both of you all, what do you, you know, YouTube's argument would be you know, well, we we give unlimited bandwidth. We have, we you know, we have to pay for these pipes and everything. Is that is that realistic or is that kind of already like a a thing they have to pay anyway? Is is that kind of a cop out? I'll let Amy answer first. Yeah. No, I I don't I don't think it is. I, and and he even makes the point at at one time where he's like, well, 
wouldn't you switch to Twitter or another network if mm -hmm. they were offering you more? And a lot, everyone raised their hand. Of course they did. But the reality is, I don't know, that sounds kind of scary to me. I don't know if I would just jump ship all of a sudden because YouTube in all of its uh, issues has still been very reliable as this free place where I can completely express myself um, for the mm -hmm. most part, no questions asked. So uh, I think the change would be a, a kind of scary. Um, and I think they know that a lot of people feel that way and they are not worried about yeah. it being changing. The, 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 big, the big issue, is, I mean, I completely agree that the things that YouTube gives you are an amazing streaming experience. Almost no one else can be as reliable when you click play, the video is going to play because it's coming from an amazing service. They also have the best mobile experience. You can try to do other mobile experiences, but YouTube has a foothold on iOS, on Android, on absolutely everything they will play on a mobile device. You can't do that mm -hmm. with your own hand-built Flash player. You can't do that with a lot of the other commercial Flash players. Um, so that yeah. is a huge selling point. Um, the thing and now is, with Chromecast, it's even better. And yeah. with Chromecast, I mean, they're right. they're they are really offering quite a lot to the table if you if you want to host your videos on YouTube. Um, my argument would be that once you reach that uh, a Google level of service, the cost per that um, those features and those specific mm -hmm. things does it kind of outweighs how much they're taking a forty five percent cut. Um, does seem a little bit high to me, um, even though truly it is, the, they are the juggernaut. They are the biggest and they do it the best. But what, when you are really, when you are, you know, 20% of the nation's, you know, bandwidth, I feel like you're operating on such a level that you have so much more efficiency that 45% doesn't quite make sense anymore. Um, yeah. And, and then when, when, you, when you think about, because he started to talk about, uh, he slipped a little bit and mentioned, you know, you know, 12 months from now, uh, I guess he knows something we don't. Like, yeah, you know, Facebook, Amazon. He mentioned AOL, Yahoo, uh, maybe Netflix. A lot of these Twitter. people, are gonna, yeah, Twitter, are going to jump in this space, and I think they should because YouTube, YouTube has never had competition, and competition is going to breed better services. Maybe subscribers will actually get our videos now. Uh, I, but as a creator myself, with with a fair amount of subscribers. I would, I would still, if Twitter approached me and said, hey, we got this new platform, you want to jump ship? No, because uh, they, they, they have to, YouTube has proved itself over years. And, and just because they're good at sending 140 characters does not mean that my audience is automatically going to jump over there with me. I could, I could be over there and, and get a tenth of my views and get, make less money. You know, try, just trying to get a better deal. So I will be apprehensive. Amy, would would oh you mentioned you wouldn't? You yeah, wouldn't no, I I'm, yeah. I'll come, I think we're exactly on the same page. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to get people to move. Yeah, it's very hard. They have the user base. That was another thing I forgot to mention is Huge. a billion yeah. users. Yeah, I mean one thing on this slide <laughs> oh, yeah. though. Whoops. Yeah, forgot oops. To <laughs> I forgot those guys. Uh, one thing on this slide though. I mean, there's there's a uh, red box to contend with. So I don't know. I kind of want my videos delivered by DVD to your local <laughs> McDonald's. Uh, well, yeah. I don't whenever, know. Whenever, whenever I come out with a new video, I want it, I want it set to Redbox. I mean, I need it to be like a week or two old news at that point. <laughs> I think that, that... Could, you, could you imagine source fed on, on Redbox? Uh, right. Oh, <laughs> my God. I don't know. Actually, you know what? Now that you say that, we I go to friends' houses and all we do is watch cat videos like on a Google TV or whatever. Just a DVD of cat videos, you know, bring that with me on a camping trip. Physical media isn't dead, folks. I'm just, just got to say. Um, yeah. and to, to seriously answer your question, I agree mm -hmm. that moving moving users away from a service is so hard. I mean, it, it's first but, mover. Everyone knows but, YouTube and can use it. Go ahead. But, but will will these new networks that are going to inevitably pop up? You know, uh, I think Amazon and Yahoo are two of the most potential because Amazon has the space and yeah. uh, Yahoo has a know-how. They used to do video. Do, do you think they will force YouTube, as Jason predicted, to drop those rates to offer better things for uh, for YouTubers? Amy, what, what do you think? Do you think just their presence would scare YouTube to get their act together? No, definitely not their presence. I think I, I think we're starting to see the effect like with uh I know one person for sure, I, Justine, is making video content for AOL. So 
Yeah. I think in these situations where these very high level, um, famous uh, YouTube stars are kind of going to other networks to create exclusive content over there, um, then maybe we're going to see YouTube shaking their boots a little bit. But uh, until they're seeing their biggest money makers make this shift, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Yeah, even with I just seen, uh, it's still posted to the AOL YouTube channel uh, as, right. as, well, <laughs> as well. So it's like it's Might still, as well it's take advantage back. of it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and to answer your question, I mean, I, I guess I would say th th it would have to be a huge buy. I mean, it would have to be a huge coup to get, like, the top 300 channels on YouTube to all post content to AOL or something like yeah. that. Um, and, then, and then on top of that, for AOL to say the reason they're doing this is because it, uh, we're only taking 10% of the ad revenue. And so yeah. whatever they do, it's practically theirs. You know, um, and the thing that Jason did mention, is just to conclude this, I, is... I, I don't think he considered these big networks like Maker, Machinima, Full Screen. Those are the, the those are the top yeah. as far as you know. No revenue they they're getting in and just user base. They can literally you know with support make their own and just take their users and say, hey, we're going to create our own you know mini YouTube or whatever. I don't think I don't think it'll work, but I think there's there's definitely a threat there. YouTube let networks come in. And separate, but now they're now they're nervous because everybody is segregated. They have no control, and I think they're going to try to wrestle that control back uh, from these networks. And Baker and these companies are much more powerful than we realize. Now, so, uh, not to I'm, beat, I'm interested. Yeah, not to beat a dead horse, but he also mentioned. Um, Oh, shoot, what the heck was I going to say? Yeah, let's let's kill it. Um, thank you. This I think this is a great conversation. Um, and very interesting on what what's going to happen in the future. But now it's time to thank our second sponsor for the episode. Pro our X second, our Ooh. second. We got two. We Good are. Lord. I know. Thank you so much, sponsors, for because you truly do make the, uh, this show happen. ProXBN. ProXBN is a virtual private network, a VPN that works all over the world with almost any internet connection. You can use ProXBN uh, to surf your, the web, use AO, you know, your instant messaging. All sorts of programs work with ProXBN. Basically, it creates a secure encrypted tunnel through which all of your online data passes back and forth. Your data comes out on the other end through their servers, which are located worldwide in the U.S., U.K., Asia, and more. It works over... OpenVPN or PPTP, you get to choose. So you can protect yourself against things like your own ISP's six strikes rule. Uh, make sure that your internet is truly region free. Never get those stupid, this video is not available in your country messages again. And ProXPN works on your iOS and Android device, allowing you to use your data plan or your public corporate Wi-Fi, or to have absolute, complete, and total privacy on the go. There is no app required when you use a mobile device. So go to proxbn.com slash twit for more information and to sign up. ProXBN premium accounts are normally $9.95 for a month or $74.95 for an entire year, but... Because you're listening to this week in YouTube, you get a special offer. Use the offer code TWIYT to receive 20% off the lifetime of your account. That is less than five bucks a month on the yearly plan. And if you're not satisfied, of course, you can cancel within seven days for a full refund. So head on over to proxbn.com slash twit and use the sign up code TWIYT. And we thank ProXBN for their support of this week in YouTube. So head on over to proxbn.com slash twit. Use our code T W R Y T. So <laughs> it's time. So I hope that it's time to unopen the package that we that yes. we packaged up earlier. Take it out. And I hope, Amy, you have a YouTube tip, maybe to help YouTubers with their social, uh, to to see what they can actually pull off and uh, and what can they do. I, I need help, girl. I I don't. Hey, I'm here I for you, so my so. friend. I've been writing letters to people, so and so. I don't think it's working, Amy. What can I do? <laughs> oh, oh, that's too bad. <laughs> well, I'm gonna say something that's probably gonna shock you at first, but it kind of um, goes back to what Cal Canis was saying a little bit in his talk at VidCon. Um, you need to have your own website, which we talked about a little bit earlier, but 
you also need an email list. And I know that sounds so crazy. Like people don't check their email. People hate email. And that's so not true. It's really the one place where we have someone's undivided attention anymore. So anytime you can get those advocates on your list is so, so important. And I strongly suggest, especially no matter what size channel you have, but especially if you're smaller, is suggesting it in your video and taking advantage of um, the partner program with YouTube and being able to have annotations that go back to your associated website so that you can actually link on the video to an opt-in form for an email list. Getting people to the website is so important. Getting people on your email list, even more important. It's really the next step to the better way to subscribe. Honestly, the subscribe on YouTube is lacking in my opinion at this point. Um, I worry about whether or not people are getting my videos. Not that they're not getting them, but it's really a long stream if you're subscribing to a lot of people. When someone's on an email list, you don't have that problem. If they're checking their email, they're gonna get all your videos as long as you keep up with them. So I really, really suggest that. I know that sounds crazy. Do you guys use email at all? Uh, you know, uh, me and Lamar, I mean, have talked oh, multiple times about how broken the subscribe box is. Mm -hmm. And truly, really? yeah. a email subscriber is the same as a YouTube subscriber, except they only get your videos. And of course, yeah. exactly. do, it, do it correctly. Use a, use MailChimp or something where they can opt out, they can unsubscribe from you. Yes. Do it correctly. Um, um, but I think this is a great tip that I, I'm surprised we haven't mentioned before. This is... No, it's, well, it's not only... It's, it's great because YouTube has this feature where it can email uploads. I've tested it on multiple channels. Uh, I, I sometimes get the emails, I sometimes don't. So right. you have to, like you were saying, you have to bring those back in home. Keep you going because yeah. this is this is great. No, absolutely. And what was so crazy is what he was saying about, I think YouTube should be giving us the email addresses of subscribers. And I was mm -hmm. like, whoa, because on one hand, I'm like, can we handle that information? But at the same time, we're kind of asking for the same thing. I, I like the idea of just asking for it. If you're going to ask for a subs I mean, I make the time for it at every, at the end of every video. I don't waste people's time in the beginning. I give them the content right away. And then when they get to the end, if they're still watching, I let them know like, Hey, if you like the YouTube thing, do all this fun stuff that they have you do here. But you know, we really have fun at my website. So make sure you sign up for the email. You won't miss anything. And just the exclusive content, giving away free stuff, giving discount codes, you're offering up so many more opportunities to monetize what you're doing. And you're not just depending on YouTube for that. Email opens up so many more doors for you in terms of being able to make money at this. So let me ask you, how many people can you expect? Like, let's say, let's say you have a uh, 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. What was, is it like just standard 1% will probably come over? Probably. I mean, okay. like it's, mm. people don't like to leave. Um, I, I, I think I have about, I have, I have 1% for sure. But the, the point of that was really that I, it, I wasn't asking YouTube for a long time right. until I finally realized associated website links on annotations is totally going to pay off for, for email opt-ins. So I started asking more recently. So th that number for me isn't exactly relevant, but he, as he was saying at VidCon, sorry, I keep referring back to that, but you know, if you have a hundred thousand subscribers and you know, 1% of those, is on an email list. That's a lot of people where yeah. if you're and offering loyal a product fans. or a service, very loyal, if you're mm -hmm. offering a product or service in the future, that's a good amount of people to be marketing that too. Yeah, you and sell they some t-shirts. Totally. <laughs> yeah. 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 T-shirts, great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and truly, don't ever, I mean, this, this harkens back to last week's tip uh, by Lamar that says, don't think of yourself as a YouTuber. The only thing right. that makes you a YouTuber is that you're posting videos on YouTube. And if you own your own audience, you are way better off. I mean, yep. I was mm -hmm. telling uh, Lamar earlier, uh, Milby, who is a huge um, uh, member of the Minecraft community, missed an edit on one video and his entire account he has probably over a hundred thousand subscribers his entire account just got pulled every video is gone he's not making any money anymore oh yeah yeah and it's That's because crazy. one video he missed an edit and he didn't he even says he didn't have any um uh strikes on his account but it's like this can happen, folks. It's not unheard That's of. That's so scary. Yeah, yeah. And you, you have are, no one to talk to once that happens. No, and he's he's no in the one. middle. He's in the middle. It happened over the weekend, so of course everyone at YouTube was gone. It was automated. Um, he was he's talking to his network. Luckily, he's large enough to have a network. But if you are not large enough to have your own, you know, network, like this is a nightmare. And own your own audience, folks. It just makes too mm -hmm. much sense. 
Totally. Yep. That, that's something I learned from Scoble a long time ago. Uh, I mean, the, the, the man, the man takes his audience everywhere, and I always wonder how he did it. It always starts with the site mm -hmm. or, or email. So, uh, Amy, thank you for reiterating that. I, I'm going yeah, to get absolutely. a Mailchimp. I promise. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Good. Perfect. So, uh, Lamar, what have you been up to this last week on YouTube? Oh, this last week I have done absolutely nothing because I didn't have a uh, a, a voice. <laughs> so uh, today I managed to throw out, throw out a video. I was um, I I never do unboxings, but there was this crazy laptop uh, that that I I showcased. This is Acer R7, which is kind of a weird tablet, uh, easel, uh, crazy kind of laptop. So I talk about that, and then I I talk actually talked about having the um, the audience help me build a website because I'm going to use Squarespace. Uh, not a sponsor. Not a sponsor for this. Right. Uh, it was sponsor for that video, but but I, but I, I really need to. I really need their help, and 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 because you know if I crowdsource it, it'll come out to be a much better site than I could ever make. I completely. So agree. So, so that's that's what I'm gonna work. That's what I'm working on. Yeah, look at that crazy thing. That's insane. <laughs> the, 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 oh, and I'm using Google, I'm using Google Glass right now. By the way. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite part of that video. I'm like, he's using <laughs> glass. What? Yeah, I didn't think to move Glass. the lights to the side, so it's like it's all. It's like it's JJ like JJ Abrams. Abrams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lens flare, like, any lens flare is JJ Abrams. Just want to like, let everyone know that, by the way. Yeah, I didn't uh, realize it's afterwards. Uh, that's well. cool. It looks great. Looks great. Very cool. Yeah, well, so. what about you? This last week, I have also been trying to put my life back together ever since vacation and my family came in. Um, today, I was hoping to get it up before the show so I could say, yeah, I uploaded a video. Um, I, did a, I did a Let's Play of uh, Papers, Please, which is a dystopian paper-pushing game. Yeah, it sounds stupid, and it's actually kind of fun. And it's uh, anyway, the first episode's going up uh, later today, and then I've also uh, I'm also going to record a vlog. I found out that my Google I've been using Google Voice for a long time, but there was a a glitch where it about two years ago is recording those to my Verizon uh, mailbox, and now that mailbox is full, and I haven't listened to those phone messages in two years so it's kind of like a little time capsule back to when i was living in austin oh, texas wow. um, back when i was working for a different guy and so i'm gonna do a vlog where we listen to those uh voice messages together <laughs> for the first oh, time they're all they're all brand new to me because it's been so long uh so that's right. also going up uh later this week amy what okay. have you been up to in the past week or what can we look forward to uh in the future Actually, my content on Savvy Sexy Social was so fun last week because I did a couple of videos at VidCon. So uh, I do three videos a week, uh, Savvy Tuesday, Sexy Wednesday, and Social Thursday. So for Savvy Hello. Tuesday, like we were talking about, we did DSLR tips. And uh, Sexy Wednesday was an interview with Taco Bell because they definitely are rep in the YouTube space. So I wanted to talk to them about their social media strategy. So definitely some good stuff from last week. And of course, more content this week. Same schedule. Cool. Did you get to try the, the waffle taco? No, I didn't. I, I just heard about this today. I think I'm it's not breaking news. It's a waffle taco. Um, I think I saw that on SourceFed or something, and I totally just didn't watch it. Do it. Uh, it <laughs> yeah, it looks a little uh, uh, like a lot of calories in the face. Uh, so I'm not <laughs> yeah. gonna. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm just not even gonna hear this. I just might be sitting in a certain room back here for a while if I have that, and I'm not saying what room <laughs> is back there. Uh, yeah, this but, is uh, a really keep creepy that to yourself, video, my friend, of a guy yes. eating his waffle taco. Oh God! Yeah, it's actual waffles. It's an actual waffle taco. Oh, oh my gosh! I can see him getting fatter. Yeah, no, he's growing before <laughs> our eyes. What's okay, it, okay kinda, let's I'm just totally let's just break down this shot, thing. by the way, because yeah, he's eating in a car. He's got a baby carriage behind him. It looks like maybe even <laughs> a tiny pool back there. Uh, blared out anyway. Uh, that, that that has been this episode of This Week in YouTube. <laughs> yes, it Amy, has. thank you so much for joining the show. It was an absolute pleasure to have you. you. Definitely. Um, let great. people know, where can they find you? Where's your YouTube and your Twitter and everything? Pimp, whatever yeah. you want. I love to tweet at Schmatastic and at Savvy Sexy Social. SavvySexySocial.com. You can find all my videos and my email opt-in form. Hey, hey, hey yeah, hey. okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And um, if you want to find out more about uh, video content marketing for your brand, I'm the president of Vlogboss Studios. You can check out Vlogboss.com. Perfect. Wow. 
This has been This Week in YouTube. You can find us on the web at twit.tv slash YT. There you will find links to subscribe either in your favorite podcatcher. We have tons and tons of versions. Or, of course, on YouTube. We are this uh, youtube.com slash thisweekyt or TWIYT. Either of those will land you on our channel. And make sure you subscribe. If you want to watch the show live, feel free to join us every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific. That's 8 p.m. Eastern. And I swear the next time that I email my guests, I will say that correctly. Uh, you can join the chat room. It is great to have you here. Uh, so thank you for everyone who watched this week of This Week in YouTube. We will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.